Hello, this is the weekly update for Mr. Fix's Science class for the week of August 27th. So let's take a look at what we did this week. All right, so we finished the soda can uh, activity, so let's take a look at it. All right, so again, the whole purpose of this was to figure out how can you prevent a soda can from losing uh, its coldness, or in other words, allowing heat from the surrounding environments to go into the can and warm up the liquid. All right, so we did this last week, but we then got the data and we analyzed the data this week. And so the trends we saw in the data was that all wrappings, uh, including no wrapping, the nothing one, had an increase in temperature over time. Now, we can't tell from this data the temperature versus time graph of which one was the best. So we have to take that data and then we calculate the percent temperature change for each one. So based on that, we recognize that the wool had the wool sock had the least amount of percent temperature change over time then aluminum and then the rest okay so we then answered the questions based on that data based on that uh, data table based on the graph Okay, uh, I then passed back and went over homeschool connection number one, which I kind of went over in that video last week. And then we added to page eight the reference notebook. So the reference notebook, page eight, looks something like this. All right, uh, so we finished that Monday and Tuesday. Then we continued to add heat transfer key terms to the reference notebook. So we added temperature, heat insulator, heat conductor, and those were based on the results from the cold soda can demonstration. So some of the cold, the wrappings around the cans were better heat insulators than others. The wool sock was the best heat insulator, then aluminum foil, and then followed by some of the others. And then we also added conduction types of thermal energy heat transfer. All right, so we had a person hold a metal spoon and a plastic spoon in their hands and then we place ice cube penguins inside or on the spoons and we noticed that the penguin that was on the metal spoon melted faster or more than the one on the plastic spoon and we also noticed that our hand touching the metal spoon was got our hand got colder versus the hand touching the plastic spoon so that's what we observed in the spoon race and then we had to figure out okay what was causing that so again we looked at our key terms let's go back to our key terms on page seven heat is the movement of thermal energy from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature so based on that well dice cube penguins a lower temperature the hand is a higher temperature so heat is the transfer of thermal energy from an area of higher temperature of the hand to the area of lower temperature the penguin so it was the thermal energy was passing through the spoon from the hand into the penguins so that's why the penguins started to melt and the hands started to get cold. It didn't really do that with the plastic spoon, so it must be that spoon is a poor conductor of heat. The thermal energy from the hand didn't really get to the spoon and to the, uh, well, it got to the spoon, it just didn't travel from the spoon to the penguin because it seems like it's a poor conductor. All right. So basically, the uh, penguin, or sorry, the spoon, uh, the thermal energy transfer type was conduction. So we learned that and added it to page 7 of our reference notebook. We then took a look at an article from Amplify called Absolute Zero. So this article is from our online textbooks, which we have access to starting this week. So there's four paragraphs. We read about temperature and molecule motion and absolute zero. This was tying back to our, basically, our uh, terminology of what temperature is. Temperature is a measure of the average energy and motion of the atoms and molecules. And so the article was basically, well, if all molecular motion ceases, then you have zero molecular motion, therefore zero temperature. So that's absolutely zero. And then we did a follow-up to the, to the reading that article. This is also through Amplify. And so students, based on that, they answered a question and handed it in. Okay, uh, then on Thursday, we did the ice-cold lemonade activity. 
So students read about it, they made their choice, and then they had to explain their thinking. And then they had to pose questions, pause, and paraphrase to learn what their elbow partner thought. And then we went through it, and we marked it up about what was actually happening. The choice was actually B, heat from the lemonade moved to the ice, because, again, heat is the transfer of thermal energy from an area of higher temperature, the warm lemonade, to the area of colder temperature or lower temperature, which is the ice cube. So that's why it's B. And so we then place that into page 10 of the reference notebook. There it is, all marked up. Um, then we you played around with the Amplified Thermal Energy Sim. So the students had an opportunity to play around, see what features this uh, Sim has, what it can do. Uh, so we did that. And then from there, we expanded what we can do in the Sim. We, was, we were more systematic in what we did in our observations. So each student got a copy of the dock temperature versus thermal energy sim. So they were given definitions, they were given directions, and then they had to write their responses based on what they observed in the sim into the green spaces provided. We started that Thursday and we finished that on Friday and turned it in. Then we did a p ed puzzle on Friday on a video called There's No Such Thing as Cold. We did it as a class together. Their homework this week was to finish the Ed Puzzle Misconceptions About Heat Energy, and that was due by Friday at 3.10 p.m. So that's what we did this week. Hope you have a good weekend. Bye-bye.